Greetings, everybody. This is Nathan Allen from Poets and Quants, where I'm a staff writer and editor. And this is continuing on with our one-on-one -on -one alumni series where we're interviewing alumni from uh, some of the top business schools around the world and um, sharing, sharing their thoughts with, with you all. So for this session, we have Jeff Tang, who graduated with an MBA from the University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. Um, he's been out in the workforce for a while, spent a few years at General Mills, then at Cliff Bar, um, and now he's back in the Career Center at Darden. Jeff, how are you today? Living the dream, Nathan. It looks like you are <laughs> as well from that background. Living, living the COVID dream. Hopefully I didn't mess up any of that. If I did, just correct me. No, um, so let's, let's just start with, with what brought you back to Darden and what you're doing now. It's, it looks like it's a relatively new um, position that you're doing. Um, so yeah, so what, what, what was it that brought you back? Uh, you know, obviously Darden was a transformational experience for me as a student, and I really do look back at those two years as two of the best years of my life, personally and professionally. And so, uh, you know, without that as the backdrop, I certainly obviously would not have come back. And I've always felt that calling the Darden alumni field to continue to pay it forward and um, to be a resource um, and an advocate and a guide for for Darden students in the Darden community and the Darden alumni base. I um, was fortunate enough that the Dean um, and senior leadership at Darden have really looked at the Career Center as an area that we could continue to make growth and strides in improving the services for students. And so, um, you know, our leadership created a series of senior director roles to bring folks with, you know, elite experience from MBAs and within their fields of consulting, general management, tech, uh, marketing, and, that, and, and those kind of key verticals, investment banking, and bringing senior directors in with that kind of lead experience to be able to better service and be better prepare students for internship, uh, you know, the process, and also of course for full time full time offers as well. So was fortunate enough to have been um, given an opportunity to return to Darden in that perspective for marketing and general management careers, and so I've been back for about for about eight months now, and you know it, it really does um, it does feel like a dream come true, and it doesn't really feel like work, right? Because um, the past seven years in industry, I've spent a lot of time helping um, Darden students um, kind of find their path and find their way. And it is a joy for me to do it and an honor and a privilege. So, Right. And you have, you came in at a very interesting time into a career center uh, and, in March, and that's probably a conversation for, a, for another time. Um, but yeah, interesting time to be coming into that position. Very unique. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about your background and, and your experience as an MBA student at, at Darden. So you have a, a kind of unique background coming from um, you're a journalist like I am, have a journalism degree from Northwestern, spent a few years doing broadcast. Uh, what was it that made you think about the MBA and decide to get an MBA? Yeah, and I hope this is resonant for a lot of folks who are career switchers, right? Like it can be a little bit intimidating and it's okay if you don't have every single path carefully laid out. I certainly did not. Um, I always tell people that journal, like as a reporter, as a field reporter, I was like the fingers and the toes of the organization, which yep. is where you feel the color and the richness and the texture of life. And it is a beautiful place to be, but I was ready to be the heartbeat of a team, of an organization, um, of a business. And so the best way forward for me to kind of position myself to be the heartbeat um, was through, a, through an MBA. And that's about all I knew, to be honest. And I um, was fortunate enough to find some great alums and some great um, second year students to help really show me that the storytelling and the human centered nature of what I was able to experience and the broad based kind of cross functional nature of what I did as a journalist really steered me well into the kind of path of brand management and marketing. Yeah, and I'm wondering if you can go into any more detail about was there a specific time or moment when you thought like, oh, the MBA is something that I could do? Or was it something that you kind of been thinking about for years? And there are some events that happen? What were there any just kind of pinpoints that you can look back to that that you're like oh yeah this is what I want to do yeah I mean I think you know it's just it's you know now that I'm in the career services industry like I think about like just career strategy and like what is the upside what is the opportunity what are the what are kind of the, the difficult decisions that you have to make and the difficult choices you have to make and the reality is that I had a successful tv news career but the reality also is sometimes you have to be at the right place at the right time you know the yeah. right people to for that career to kind of come to fruition otherwise you're making like 40, 50,000 bucks a year for the rest of your life. And 
Yeah. So, you know, for someone who really wanted to have a family and to be able to support that family, it just, that kind of was a really important thing for me to, to take into account to say like, how could I find a lot of the creative and human centered things that really feed me at work, but find that in a way that I could also be, like I said, the, a team leader, a leader of women and men, um, and also be able to have, you know, the means to support a family. So I think it was all those things kind of rolled together um, that, that really, you know, encouraged me to make the switch. Yeah. And then so once you decided that the MBA was the path for you, um, there's obviously a ton of schools that you can pick from um, all over the country, all over the world. What was it that made you gravitate towards Darden's Graduate School of Business? Yeah, so I you know, applied to several schools, looked into several schools. I actually was talking to another Northwestern alum, um, and he was like, yeah, you're going to apply to Darden, right? And I'm like, what are you, um, maybe? <laughs> and he's like, you know they have a scholarship program for journalists that go back to business schools. Like, I'll check it out. So that's kind of what put it on the radar screen. was yeah. fortunate enough to get that fellowship. But um, honestly, like, just being on grounds, and I, I, it's kind of hyperbolic, but like, you know, it is this majestic, beautiful place. And I remember being like, am I allowed to step on the grass? Like, is, is that okay? <laughs> like, it, like, I don't want to ruin this like picture, you know? Um, and then having um, this really special um, MBA interview with Whit Kastner, who is now the director of the um, of our alumni or uh, admissions team. And it was just one of those things where you're able to connect with a person at that kind of like really tight level. And it was just this beautiful conversation about, what Darden is and who I am. And I felt like Darden was ready to look at me holistically, not as a consulting student or a banking student or a marketing student with this particular potential ROI, right? And so that fact that I felt like a human in that experience and felt yeah. like even though I didn't have like a, a perfect quote unquote MBA resume, they saw the, the potential in me, they saw the good in me. And then going to the classroom and seeing the case method in action, you know, um, it really was this magical moment. And honestly, whether I got the scholarship or not, I left, you know, Charlottesville knowing that that's, that was my top choice. Yeah. And then, so once you get into the program, what were some of your initial impressions um, as a student? You know, I always tell people like, I'm ready to tell you the secret about Darden and why yeah. it's the best. And it was the best for me. Um, and it doesn't steal anything away from the experience. So the reason I feel like case method is great is because you are in a big room with a bunch of people who are smarter than you and you are given a case. You're not given, here's the answer, here's the beginning, here's the middle, of the end, here's the homework and go do the thing in this linear path, right? You're given kind of this open-ended, fuzzy, difficult question with infinite answers and then you work it through together as a group. And right. You may come in with a preconceived notion. Someone else might come in with a different notion and you work it through together. And the fun thing is once you go in to become a, a leader, whether it's in general management, marketing, banking, consulting, or otherwise, you're not given like, here's the answer and here's the beginning and the middle and the story and the, right? right. And you're not given any of that. The same uncertainty and that same process of having to work with a bunch of really smart people to come to a solution and to learn through it together in a way that respects each other and brings out the best in each other that is business, right? So I walked into my first day of, on the job at General Mills with what I felt to be two years of experience in kind of the fundamental problem solving process through the case method. Yeah, totally. And you, you kind of already started to hit on this, but I'm wondering if you can go into any more specifics about some of the more bigger highlights of the program for you. Oh, so many. Um, <laughs> For, you know, for me, like the, you know, the, our faculty is rated number one consistently across a series of different ranking systems. And just, you know, my personal opinion, I, I, I couldn't see how it could be any other way. Like I still, it's been really fun coming back to Darden and all these years later, Elliot Weiss, operations professor, who was extremely influential for me, even though I'm a marketing student, like I applied a lot of those, the operations, you know, I have a Kanban board behind me still to this day <laughs> because Ellie Weiss taught me about I'm like, hey, that's smart. I like that, right? And yeah. so, um, and Greg Fairchild, who taught a business and ethics, um, ethics in business and ethics and literature class, and um, allowed me to lead a case class of one day as a second year student. And that felt 
like a really like rites of passage moment for me to say like now I'm not just one of the the, the students that's on part of the cross functional team I'm also now getting a chance to lead that cross functional team right so those are really transformational moments in the classroom and then like Professor Fairchild him and his wife Tierney like bring a bunch of the students to their home obviously in safer times and you know like we're his kids are there showing me their fancy Muhammad Ali <laughs> book that you have to put gloves on. So, yeah. you know, like that beautiful, like real, like human relationship that extends outside of the classroom is beautiful. Also our section, section E won the Darden cup, which is like this big competition for four yeah. straight years. And so that was um, a fun uh, kind of way for us to kind of build, build rapport together and build, build connection. Yeah, totally. And then let's talk a little bit about, um, personal growth. Uh, you know, there's obviously the career side of things whenever you go get your MBA, but it's also a time to, to grow personally. You're kind of, you know, most people are traditionally in their 20s, early 30s. And so it's still a time of growing and understanding themselves. Did you have any personal growth moments that you can reflect upon and no, share I didn't with us? No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like that was my, maybe my favorite thing about Darden. Like, you know, I still, to this day, when people hear that I went to Darden, they're like, why did you do that to yourself? That place is so hard. <laughs> You know, like we're renowned for like being a grueling program. And there's a secret to that as well. And a reason for that. But for me, my philosophy was like, when it comes to Microsoft Excel, I pretty much only use it for my fantasy football team. So like I'm starting at like a zero out of 10 on accounting and on finance and decision analysis. And if I come out at a five or a six, like the growth that just happened there is like enormous. And somebody might come in as an eight and leave as a nine. And that is cool. But like, for me to be able to make that enormous set of strides, it was amazing. And I'll never forget Casey Lichtendahl and my decision analysis professor at graduation, like, like look me dead in the eyes and shake me. And he's like, Jeff, do you realize like you can do this? Like, and that kind of starting with all the doubts and all the uncertainties, like everybody's so smart and coming out and be like, no, I can do that. There's a coming of age and there is this really beautiful experience and confidence and awareness of the growth that you really have made professionally and then of course personally right like all, all the friendships and connections relationships that you build that are still meaningful to this day and now i get it's funny because i'm like hey guys i want to catch up with you but i also want to like make sure you're remembering our fabulous students and you know so there's <laughs> a little bit of a dual yeah. purpose to my catching up with my classmates now but those friendships and relationships they do they do last forever yeah and then let's talk about career. You're about six, seven years since you left Darden with your MBA. Um, what are some ways in which you really felt the impact of the MBA um, as you're working for General Mills and then Cliff? Yeah. So first of all, to even get an opportunity at an elite CPG company like General Mills is all, I mean, I think that from being a TV reporter, you, you know, to being able yeah. to go to that elite type of program tells you everything you need to know about how, how far along Darden can bring a person. Because, yeah. you know, I went from wholly unequipped from that to being able to have a successful career in marketing and brand management. And so that should tell you everything you need to know about, like, you know, how capable Darden is at preparing people. Um, and, you know, I would say that, like, I, I've been really fortunate to have this great career that has um, allowed me to leverage the general management um, strengths um, from Darden. Um, and so I, I would say like, there's no, there's no question in my mind that Darden has influenced me, not only from a development perspective, but also just from a positioning perspective, like without that two years at Darden, that transition from television news reporter to brand management, not to mention a company like Cliff Bar, family and employee right. owned company that gives so much to the planet, to the community, to its people. I mean, that was always the dream for me. And um, you know, Darden helped make that dream come true to me, for me. And, um, and so I'm forever thankful for that. And now I'm lucky enough to be able to help other students' dreams come true for them. So that, that's, the, that's the greatest boomerang. That's the greatest hope <laughs> we can ever hope for, right? Yeah, totally. And then lastly, what advice do you have for uh, MBA applicants and particularly MBA applicants like yourself coming from a less traditional business background? Yeah, my best, I mean, like my best advice is like to make sure you don't run away from that when you come to an interview at Darden, because we will evaluate you as the whole person. We won't say, oh, we're looking for 40% consultant students, consulting students and 25% bankers. And like, what bucket do you fall into? Like, you know, <laughs> like that's way less important to us than like 
trying to get a holistic understanding and evaluation of who you are and how you fit and how you bring color and beauty to kind of our community. So uh, to me, that was fun. And I'm not going to lie, there are some business schools that I applied to that I still haven't heard back from. Like, did I get in? Did I not get in? Um, and so, uh, you know, like, and I, I get that, like I was a Yaya TV reporter, right? So like, yeah. uh, so I think that's the cool thing is like, you can go no matter what your background, confident that you just go in and be your, as true to yourself as possible within that one hour interview. And I hope you get to talk to Whitney Kessner. Um, it, it's a joy. And, and uh, that although that entire team is amazing. Um, and like let the cards fall where they may. But the good news is you don't have to try to pretend to be someone or something that you're not right in this context. And I would argue those are the only types of places we would, would want to go in life. So. Yeah. Great. It, it would be nice to get at least one answer back from one of those schools, you know, yes or no or something. <laughs> I went to a school to speak uh, for, uh, for my work capacity. I won't name the school, but I did joke. I was like, you know, you know, eight years ago, I applied to the school and I never heard, but I'm so honored to be back here with these students. <laughs> and I only have one question. Did I get in? Like, what, what's the deal? Like, <laughs> yeah. what happened? And so they thought that was, was my application lost? What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for your time. We're at 15 minutes, so, so we're going to cut it off now, but, but we really appreciate your time. Everyone, again, this is Jeff Tang, and he earned his MBA from University of Virginia's Darden School and is now working in the career development office there, the Career Center. So if you end up at Darden, you'll probably be seeing him around campus whenever it's safe to do so. I love um, that. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Again, this is Nathan Allen for Poets and Quants. Thanks, everyone.